Hello and welcome. Today is chapter 9, section 4 on ellipses. So we're going to go ahead and do a lesson on that and understand what those are. So first off, our goals today is I can write equations of an ellipsis or an ellipse um, and graph ellipses as well. So first off, what are ellipses or what is an ellipse? So in this case, we have two different types and I guess this is a very chaotic picture, so I'm sorry about that. But what is an ellipsis? An ellipsis is the set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points is constant. So if I have two fixed points, which we're going to call the foci, or each one's a, 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 a focus, so this would be a focus and a focus, and together it's foci or foci, or what do people say different things? I call them foci. Um, in this case, we have a point here and a point here. We label those Fs. And basically, if I have a string, let's say, from here connected all the way to here, and I take this and I move it around the circle, the distance from those would always be the same. If you want to Google that, just Google like an ellipsis and using foci, and Desmos has a great activity, and I show that in class. It also works here as well, so this is a vertical ellipse, and this is a horizontal ellipse. And a few things about them is there are two axes of symmetry. We have a major axis of symmetry. So the one that goes the long way is your major axis. And the one that's going the short direction, so the vertical one, is called the minor axis. So this one is the minor axis. Also, this is the minor axis as well. So it's the whole thing. And those are axes of symmetry or axis of symmetry. Also, what to know is we have something called a covertex and a vertex. Well, we just call the ones with the major axis, these are vertex or vertices with the major axis. So these ones will be vertices. That's vertex or vertices. And the covertex or the covertices are the ones on the minor axis or the shorter ones. There are a few things. We have A, B, and C inside of this circle where we have the length A of this triangle. We have the length B of this triangle and the length C of this triangle. And we will be using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but in this case, the, the a, b's, and c's are reordered a little bit. We're used to seeing c up here. I'm not really sure why they switched those up exactly, but I believe in the equations for the ellipse, it basically makes a lot more sense to have a and b in a certain area. So what we're going to do is apply both of these in just a moment, but there is a few things I want to get through in just a second. So these are the standard forms of an ellipse centered at the origin, meaning at 0, 0. Um, actually, this equation works for circles as well. Um, so these are very similar to circles, so similar to circles at the origin, circles. And it actually is... The same equation, except we're adding an a squared and b squared underneath both of those. Now, what we do want to know is that if we have an ellipse that's orientated horizontally, meaning if we have it kind of an oval going this way, then we're going to use this equation. And these things apply when we have an orientation that is horizontal, meaning your major axis, the major axis, the longest one, is horizontal. Now, the other one here, if I look here, this is when we have a vertical one. So we have an oval that's kind of vertical. And then we're going to use this equation here. So what I like to do actually is switch this equation around. So the book does it a little strange. I like staying with x squared plus y squared. But what I do is I swap around. Now I have b squared under the x squared and a squared under the y squared. And it's still always going to equal 1. So all, all I do from here to here is just switch a squared and b squared around, and that will change it. In the fact that we go back, our a is always going to be bigger than b, because the a squared is your major axis part of that. It's part of your major axis. It's half of the, that uh, distance between the vertices. So we're going to go ahead and apply this in a little bit. Also, some things, again, the length of the major axis is 2 times a, which actually applies back to that again. So again, your major axis is 2 times these a values, and the minor is 2 times b, hence why we switch them around as well. So let's go ahead and write an equation for the ellipse. So first off, we have a center at 0, 0. So we can use the x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, 
with the a squared and b squared under one of them. We don't know which one yet, but now that we look at this, it's orientated, so orientated, and it's vertically. Therefore, if it's orientated vertically, we're going to have the major axis going up and down, and we're going to use this formula where you do x squared over b squared this time, plus you're going to do y squared over a squared, which is equal to 1. And that's something you can write down in your formula sheet, so then you don't have to necessarily memorize it, but it is also good to know that if it's a vertical or, or uh, orientation, then the biggest one is underneath the y. So the longest is under the y, which makes sense. A is always bigger than b, so a matches with the y, and b is going to be matched with the x because it's the shorter distance. So now all we really need to do is actually find a and b, and then we're done. So if you go or remember back to before, the distance between here, this is actually your a value. So that is a, but it also is this. So this distance from here to here, all the way to here, that's always 2a, the entire distance. This whole distance is 2a. So we just want half of that distance. So if we actually figure out this distance, which we go from 0, 5 to 0, negative 5, so that's 5, and another 5, which is 10. So therefore, we know that 2a is equal to 10, or specifically, a is just 5, which is really nice. Also, we know that this distance here is going to be 2b, the, so that was 2b, and we know that it's 6 in length, so 2b is equal to 6, so then b is just 3. Essentially, we're done here. You could also do it another way, because if you remember before, we have this would be our b value. This is going to be our c value, which we know is 4. We could use Pythagorean theorem and say this is 4 squared, and this is plus 3 squared, and is equal to a squared. We could do that or use the Pythagorean theorem to find any of them, especially if we we're given the foci and not any of the other points. So that could be also helpful. But since we are given all this, we're just going to go ahead and now substitute those values in here. We just have to take A and B, plug them in, and then we're done. So our final answer here, let's go ahead and do that in the green, is just X squared over B squared, which is 3 squared or 9, plus we're going to do Y squared over A squared, which A in this case is 5 squared or 25, and all equal to 1. Now again, if you want, again, you could switch around x and y, so I think the answer in your book will be y squared over 25 plus x squared over 9 is 1, because they like the bigger number first. I always like going x squared and y squared. That's a personal preference. So if you wanted to try and practice this, go right ahead. Uh, pause it. I'll have an answer in a few seconds. So this would be your answer. Very similar. Um, the y is the longest one, so we're going to have the biggest number under the y. Hence, we have 5 again, actually, so 5 squared for our, our a value. And in this case, we only made this 4 for the b value, hence why we got 4 squared or 16.